Okay, we're at the final lab here in this module. Let's put it all together now and let's build something really cool and useful with our newfound knowledge. Let's build a script that will function like a security backup tool and it will actually back up our home directory and it'll utilize data streams, it will apply file compression and also uses variables as well too. When we're finished, you could actually toss this script inside of cron job and run it every 12 hours if you'd like inside of the cron tab, just like we learned in the other lab. So a lot of cool things we can do with this. Let's jump in and put it all together now. First things first, let's make sure we have two terminals set up just like the last lab. We're gonna have our script over here in the left and we'll start it off by calling it vim backupper.sh. And that's where we'll work out from and continue to develop. Start off with a shebang bin bash, just as we learned. And let's start off with a nice little introductory statement, just informing the user that something's happening. So maybe echo the backupper is running is a good indication and a cue to let the user know that something's actually happening when they run the tool. So let's put that in there as a little welcome statement. And then we can do a little bit of movie magic. We can just do echo dot 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 and it might look like something's happening. And then we can do echo backing up and we'll call the home directory variable here as well. If you're still a little unclear on the variables, you can double back to the last half of last lab. And otherwise, I'll just recap really quickly here that the variable is essentially like a bucket and it's just holding some data for us. And we discussed environmental variables that exist outside of the script. And one of which is the home variable. And the data that it holds is the location of our home directory of the Ubuntu user. So we're going to just let the user know that we're backing up their home folder and it will call that value. So when it prints on the terminal, it will say backing up slash home slash Ubuntu. Okay. And with any backup tool, we need a timestamp, right? We need to let someone know the date. So the date command is good, but that's a lot of clunky information. Let's check the man page. Maybe we can format that a little bit better. And we can see that if we add a plus followed by some formatting, then we can make a much nicer string of text to look at instead of something that's not easily recognizable. Because if it's a backup, we want to know quickly what the backup date was. So let's look at some of the formats over here. So I guess the percent %A indicates that it's the locale's full weekday name and percent lowercase b looks pretty handy too for the abbreviated month. That looks easy to read, right? Sunday and Jan in that example. So let's open up a new terminal and let's test that out. Let's actually try to run that command. So we would have to run date and then that plus command. And it actually looks pretty good, right? Just Sunday, nice and clear. And if we added an underscore and then format the text again, we can use percent lowercase b. And that looks pretty nice, actually. That's easy to read, right? Sunday underscore July. Awesome. So and what we're doing here is we're experimenting and testing and figuring out what this stuff looks like before committing it to code. And this is a really good practice. We can experiment and figure out what actually works well and is meeting our desired objectives. And this interactive prompt as we're testing it, going one step at a time, it'll allow us to sort of debug and troubleshoot and catch errors in advance. And we might even change our design decision as well too. So it's worth always doing this on the side if we can. And then with any good backup, I think we need a year appended to this as well too. I think the capital Y, that could work, right? Yeah, so that looks good. 2023 and now we need something more precise because a whole day could pass by it might actually override the backup we should maybe do a backup with hour maybe hour minute second that's really precise so let's try that okay cool so that actually looks pretty good i like that it's clear and easy to read and those numbers are visually easy to identify an incremental value to see what period in time if the backup is older or later than we need. Okay, so now we need a file name and we're gonna have to use a variable for this. So if we declare the variable of compress file name, we can then store a dynamically generated file name for the backup as needed. So we know that this date command we have in the other terminal runs and it will always generate a new timestamp. It'll just update as time moves on. So that needs to be part of the file name. So let's start the beginning of the file name. It should be called backup underscore. And then we need to do something new. And I've started with this dollar sign and bracket. If I paste that date command inside here and I close that with a bracket and then wrap up the quote, 
what will happen at runtime when the file name is actually generated. That internal command there between the brackets, that will be evaluated first, it will complete, and then the brackets and the dollar sign will disappear, and whatever is left from the internal command of that date string right there being executed, whatever is left with it will then be the final result and added on to the remainder of the file name there of backup underscore. And this is actually something called command substitution. It's a feature of the bash language, which we're using inside of the shell here. And I think to make this make more sense, let's actually look at it inside of the right-hand terminal first, and then I can walk through it a little bit more. Let's run that date command. Okay, so let's take a look at that output. Now let's run the same command that we see inside of the script. If we do echo and then backup, put the command substitution value inside there. So we'll see the command inside the brackets evaluate, and there we go, it adds on to that original backup portion. And that's really cool. So this concept of command substitution, essentially what it does is that it executes a command within a command. And the output of the inner command is then substituted as part of the outer command itself. That's really, really handy. So it enables us to use the result of one command as an argument or an input to another command. And that's how we see this working right here. All right, so it's coming along. Now we need to actually compress the file and we can use something called tar. And this is actually a really handy command. So let's take a look and see what it is with a quick what is tar. And it's an archiving utility. It's kind of like zip if you've heard of that before. And if we look inside the man page, we can get some information on specifically how to use this tar command. First things first, we're going to need to use the taxi for create. And this creates a new archive. And archives are important, remember, because they keep permissions and they keep structure. So we need to keep it a mirrored copy. We also need to clarify what type of output this compression will look like. In this case, if we scroll really far down, we're going to see a tar file type. And we want to express this as a regular file. So we'll have to throw the F inside there too. And let's not forget the compression. So we need to zip this file up. So we'll have to throw a taxi inside there as well. So let's go ahead and try to build this tar statement and see how it works. Okay, so let's go ahead and add in those extra flags inside of the tar command inside of the script. And what we need is the ZCF flags. So let's put that in there now. And now we need a file name. And we should use the absolute path so that nothing is ambiguous. So if we use the slash home variable and call the value inside of that, that will indicate that it begins in the slash home slash username directory so that any other user can run this. And then forward slash to indicate that it will live within that directory of the home user. And then we put in the value of the compressed file name variable there. And we know what that looks like. We know that's going to be the backup underscore evaluated commands within that command substitution bracket. And then we just need a file name extension and I'm going to go with .tgz and I know that that's the correct extension. You might have to look that up, but that is to indicate that this is a tar file and that it's gzipped. And then finally, we just need the final location of where the backup will live. So let's put it inside of the home users directory. Okay, good. So now let's just give a little echo statement to let the user know that the backup was complete. And that should be good enough, so we can go ahead and test this script and see if it's working. Let's write and save it, and then try to execute it. Cool, now let's just get the shamod plus x on the file, and then we can execute it and see how it works. Okay, so it's running, a nice little intro statement. We can see a bunch of commands firing off, so it's backing up. And now there's a bunch of weird error statements that are popping up, but it did complete. Let's look at the backup, awesome, it's there and we can see it, so it does exist. The backup worked perfectly, and that was actually really fast. Let's take a look at the file size. Throw the tach there on the ls command and see what it looks like. And 50 megabytes is a good backup size. That's actually pretty modest. So, all right, so now we need to figure out what's going on with all of those error statements, and that's exactly what they are. I know that, and if you didn't, you would have to look it up, but I can tell you right now, just instructing you here that these statements are letting us know that sockets were terminated in the process of running this compression and backup. And sockets, we don't know a lot about that yet, but for all intents and purposes, you can just consider them to be something like a virtual cable that sort of connects two processes together and allows communication back and forth. And that virtual cable is really just another file living at a given time with inside of Linux. So once the compression and backup happens, those sockets get terminated 
they're just no longer in use. And just keep in mind, sockets can be used between files and also between network endpoints. Okay, so we know that these are error statements. So let's go and redirect the standard error out to dev null. We don't need these statements. And this is bringing back some of that command redirection and data stream. So let's employ that in the script and make it a little bit more polished. Okay, let's fire away again. Let's see this new improved script and see how it runs in action. Nice. That's it. Nice and clean. Looks very professional. So let's go and take a look and see what the backup looks like. And you know what? Let's look inside File Manager. Maybe a user might want to use our very professional polished script and they may not be a command line user. So we can see here that that's what our backups look like. It's pretty cool. We actually have this little backup file. And if we open it up inside of Archive Manager by double clicking, we can see we actually have our home Ubuntu folder inside there and everything's nicely tucked away. Awesome, very cool. So I'll say right now, congratulations, you completed this module. You went from looking at a desktop, using the GUI, clicking around, to building out a security tool backup solution with your own personal script. That's pretty cool. That's a lot of ground to cover and you should feel really proud about yourself. At this point, Linux is yours to explore. You have a solid foundation now to build on top of it. If you'd like, you can set up the script to go run as a cron job every 12 hours. You can build on top of it. There's more you can do. You now have the foundation to develop any other further Linux knowledge. And I hope you enjoyed this module.